What's up everybody, it's Park with BI Elite. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can filter based on a categorical measure. A couple weeks ago, I had a client come to me and say, hey, I have this measure. It evaluates out to a couple different options depending on the customer's sales from 2020 and 2021. I want to slice based on that measure evaluation. So in order to put this in other words, let's take a look at this demo. In this table, we see this column called sales class. This is a measure. Basically, it evaluates out to a couple different options if the customer sales is larger in 2021 than 2020, it gets a value of increased sales. If the sales were bigger in 2020 than 2021, it gets a value of decreased sales. If the sales were the same for both years, it gets a value of no change. And then finally, if the customer only has sales in 2021, but no sales in 2020, it gets the value of new customer. So the client wanted to be able to slice and only show customers that fall within the increased sales category or if he selects new customer, for example, he sees the customer that is a new customer. So as you can see, we're filtering based on the value of this measure. This becomes even more powerful because we can combine this with another slicer or basically any other filters here. For example, if I wanna see new customers for a certain product, product two, that's now showing me all the customers that have sales in 2021, but didn't have any sales in 2020 for that specific product. So that's interesting. We see we only have one new customer overall. Basically this customer had zero sales in 2020, but we have several customers that didn't have any sales for this specific product in 2020. So it is incredibly dynamic based on what filters you're passing in to this visual. I do have another video on how to filter based on a numerical measure. Make sure you check that out. The link will be down in the description. This method is a little bit different because this measure is always evaluating out to a text value or basically a category that we then want to filter by. This trick is a lot of fun and not too difficult once you wrap your head around it. So let's get into it. Here we are in a new file. I have simply connected to our Excel data source. You can see I have about 10 customers and I have a column for their 2020 sales and 2021 sales. So I'm quickly going to visualize that in a table just by adding all of these columns, just like we saw in the previous Power BI file. And quickly, just because I want to, I'm gonna make these uh, a currency so that we can visualize them effectively. So now we just need to create our measure that we're going to use to slice by. And I'm going to call this sales class. And I'm gonna set this equal to, I'm gonna create a quick variable for my sales 2020. And I'm gonna set that equal to my 2020 sales column. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for sales 2021. Set that equal to sum of my 2021 column. And now I'm going to return a simple switch statement evaluating for true. So now we'll provide a few different pieces of logic. And if they evaluate to true, we'll classify our customer. For example, if my sales 2021 equals zero and, and my sales 2021 does not equal zero, that means they're a new customer. If my sales 2021 is greater than my sales 2020 that means they had increased sales similarly if sales 2021 is less than sales 2020 they had decreased sales and finally as a catch-all we can say no change so now that we have that done let's throw that into our table and we can easily see customer A had increased sales from 2020 to 2021. Customer B had decreased sales. Customer C is a new customer because they had no sales in 2020. And we also see no change for customer D. So that's perfect. Now let's go ahead and set up a slicer. So the easiest way to start building a slicer is we need a table with data that gives us our selections that the user can select. So you need to make a column out of that. So I'm gonna call this my sales class table and I'm gonna call this column selection. I'm also going to give it an order column. So let's give it the first value of increased sales, second value of decreased sales. Uh, let's do new customer, no change. And then finally, I'm gonna give them a catch-all of all customers. 
and we need to order these properly. So one, two, three, four, five. So let's go ahead and load that in. And give that just a second. There we go. If we look at our data view, we'll see our new sales class table. Let's go ahead and order our selection column. Let's sort by our order column. So now when we come over and create a slicer out of our new column called selection, we have them in the proper order. So I'm going to quickly change the formatting to make this horizontal orientation because that makes a nice little slicer that we can select from. I'm also going to make this a single select. So it's single select. So they have to select at least one and quickly get rid of the slicer header. So looking pretty good. So as of right now, as you might expect, this doesn't do anything. So no matter what we select, it's going to show us all of our customers down below. So we need one more measure that's going to be used as our filter logic in order to filter down this table or any other visual based on what we've selected. So I'm going to create one new measure on my data table. I'm going to call this filter status. And right now I'll just quickly set it equal to one. And I'm going to throw this in our table here. So let's throw it on the end. So we see filter status equals one. Regardless of what I select, filter status is always one. That's totally fine. All right, so now in the logic of filter status, I want to create a couple of variables. I'm gonna say firstly, current selection. So they equal to our selected value of our selection column. So it's basically giving us what has the user selected in this slicer. I'm then going to say var current class and I'm gonna set that equal to the sales class measure. So it's basically saying which sales class are we looking at for this specific customer. And then I want to return another switch statement, evaluate for true again. I want to say if current selection equals increased sales and, and our other variable, which is named current class, current class equals increased sales let's return a one and for everything else let's return a zero so let's take a look at this so let me close that down a little bit so if the user has selected increased sales in the slicer and the customer has a sales class of increased sales it gets a one else it gets a zero for everything else so if i now click on decrease sales it gets a zero because we're only covering our increased sales option so far, but that's looking pretty good as a start. Let's go ahead and copy this and we can just paste it a few times. So let's paste at least, I think that's a good amount of times. So also if the user selects decreased sales and the actual sales class evaluates to decreased sales, return a one, basically we just do this the same for each individual selection. So new customer, new customer. We have no change as well. No change, no change. And then actually let's go ahead and end it there. So let's take a look, should be working pretty good. So we have one and zero for increase sales, decrease sales. We see it showing ones for the options or for the customers with decrease sales new customer ones and no change. It's looking pretty good. So all customer still isn't working. Everything gets a zero. We actually want everything to get a one when we've selected all customers. So we'll go ahead and say, if our current selection equals all customers, provide a value of one. So now when they've selected all customers, everyone gets a value of one. So it works a little bit differently. And finally, to make our table actually filter down based on our selection, we simply click on the table, open up the filters pane, and let's throw in filter status in the visual level filters. And I'm gonna set filter status is one. And apply that filter. So now this table is only ever gonna show data where this filter status is one. So for all customers, every value is a one. For increased sales, we now only show customers with a filter status of one, meaning that customer sales class needs to be increased sales. If they click on decrease sales, uh, you only see the three customers with decrease sales and so on. I don't think I need to explain that anymore. But now at this point, we can get rid of our filter status column and now it's simply filtering down on the back end. So 
that is the entire trick. I really like this one. It's fairly easy to set up once you wrap your head around how that filter status is working. So with this video and the other video I mentioned on how to slice based on a numerical measure, you can do some really cool things using the visual level filters. Make sure you check out that video. The link will be down in the description. If you did like this video, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new. It is the best way to show your support of the channel and helps me continue making Power BI content. If you like the way I explain Power BI concepts, make sure you check out my training over at training.biaelite.com. We have some awesome on-demand training on Power BI, DAX, SQL, and Alteryx. And we're also hosting our first live training event coming up on July 28th. So if you want to spend a day learning how to set up an entire Power Platform solution, so that's Power BI, Power Apps, and Power Automate, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's going to be a great time. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.